Alberta's real estate prices have been hanging in there a lot better than Toronto. And you may also have heard that cash flows are pretty good there too. So with Alberta being in your face a lot more these days with all these Alberta is calling campaigns, you might be wondering how investing in places like Calgary compared to Toronto. So in this video, let's break down the numbers to see how they stack up. But before I continue, if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos like this made specifically for real estate investors in Toronto. Calgary's property prices are more affordable and with more people being able to work from home, the thought of living in Calgary might seem like a better idea. More recently, Alberta is benefiting because of the improved outlook for energy and agriculture, which helps to hedge against rising inflation and interest rates. According to the latest RBC report, GDP growth in the prairies is for sure up this year and labor markets are almost as strong as in Toronto. But perhaps psychology plays an important role in supporting their housing market in Calgary these days. Given their stronger short-term outlook in their economy, income growth prospects are strong and the strong consumer confidence does help to prop up their real estate market. And you can definitely see it since Alberta is actually the only province that's expected to see positive growth year over year in Canada for 2022. But the reality is that housing is highly dependent on interest rates and the difference is that Alberta might just see a more delayed reaction. In fact, Alberta's debt to income ratios are amongst the highest in Canada and since real estate prices in Alberta haven't budged much this year, RBC predicts that Alberta will see a 27% dip in sales next year. And even though RPC does expect weakness in Ontario as well, it is a much smaller 10% drop. Note that this isn't a price change forecast, but a sales volume forecast from RBC. But usually when sales drop, it ends up dragging down prices with it. For example, in Toronto, our 416 house sales dropped by around 36% year over year since April. And that's why we've seen a 24% price drop from the peak. The other thing to remember is that this recent price support in Alberta mainly does come from its huge reliance on oil. And here's another interesting chart from BMO that shows the boom and bust for real estate in various markets in Canada. What you can see is that once oil prices drop, Calgary's real estate prices usually get dragged down with it. And because they are so dependent on a single economy, the boom and bust cycles ends up lasting longer compared to Ontario, which is more sensitive to interest rate movements, but ends up seeing quicker recoveries. When it comes to comparing investment opportunities, we always like to look at fundamentals. The economy is more diverse in Ontario and even more so in Toronto, which means there are more ways to help us bounce back. And if you look at historical trends, Toronto has seen much stronger appreciation at 7.9% per year compared to Calgary at 5.4% over the past 10 years. And even if Calgary sees one or two good years in the long run, the strong market in Toronto will still outperform. Of course, we also need to look at the full picture with rental income. Rental cap rates in Calgary are higher but note vacancies are also higher there. Either way, if we strictly add appreciation and cap rates, you'll still see that Toronto historically gives better returns as a whole. Now, let's also touch on future plans. Canada has strong immigration goals, and we're expecting to see almost half a million new residents come into our country each year, and half of them come to Ontario and mostly the GTA. In contrast, only 10% head to Alberta, so where do you think you'll see stronger future price growth and rent growth? But perhaps the most important difference does come from the supply side. We do have a real housing crisis in Toronto and new housing ends up being created only through densification. For example, you can now build houses in the backyard in Toronto on single family lots and the city is actively looking into separating each single family home into four separate units in Toronto. 
All of this will help to increase rental income on existing homes, which ends up giving more upside potential for appreciation too. We may be a little bit biased because we love Toronto. We live here, we work here, and we invest here, but there is good reason for that. And honestly, even though investing in Toronto real estate might seem scarier in the shorter term, the long-term upside potential in Toronto is pretty awesome. And right now, prices are heavily discounted where you can get 25% plus off and the barrier to entry from the capital side has also gone down. Here's a quick example. You can buy a property for $880,000, which requires $40,000 in renovations. And so based on a 20% down payment plus closing cost, plus renovations, you are looking at an upfront investment capital of around $250,000. Once you're done with renos, you can rent out the house with two units for $5,000, so it ends up positive cash flowing $300 per month. And this is what we call a strong investment property. And remember, higher interest rates aren't forever as well. So if this is something that looks interesting to you, we'd be happy to share more. We're a real estate sales brokerage that focuses on investing in freeholds in core Toronto, and we search the market every day. When you work with us, we take the time to understand your needs, teach you the ropes, and help you buy the best investment property for you. But that's not all. Our team also provides renovations guidance, leasing, and property management if you need it. So just connect with us if you wanna learn more about our services by heading to the link in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you wanna hear from us more regularly. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.